from Mombasa, where our reporter Tobias Chanji is joining us. Of course, he is at the Pwani Innovation Week, and we have seen that the aim there is to showcase talents in ICT that the coast region has to offer. And Tobias is going to be speaking to some students. Good morning, Tobias. Uh, good to have you with us. What's happening there? Uh, very good morning, Malika. This is the second edition of the Pwani Innovation Week that started yesterday. I uh, remember yesterday we had uh, the Deputy High Commissioner of Britain uh, who made way here. And today, uh, the uh, Cabinet Secretary, that's John Sheru of ICT, has already uh, been here to just open uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the exhibition officially. And now with me here are some of the kids that have uh, brought the innovation. Uh, it's called the Tech Kids Africa. We have some kids here. Uh, who've had some app concerning matters, the recipe. Uh, we have others who've made apps on uh, learning uh, vernacular. Uh, it's not necessarily going to the rural areas, but one can just uh, maybe learn the vernacular as they're still uh, staying in the urban uh, centers. Now with me is the director of the Tech Kids Africa, I think. I just introduce yourself, give us your name, uh, then briefly describe to us maybe the, some of the uh, innovation uh, that you've done with these kids. Yeah, you can look at the camera. Okay, uh, my name is Paul Akwabi, and uh, you get that. Um, yeah, my name is Paul Akwabi, and uh, you get that uh, in Tech Kids Africa, what children do is they uh, try to use technology in a more constructive way, uh, simply because you get that nowadays children, uh, their playing ground actually is, techn is technology, the internet and playing games all over. So, what we're trying to, to make them understand is that they can always come up with uh, different solutions. For example, I'll use uh, Facebook. The owner of Facebook started Facebook when he was just 17 years. This has to tell you that he, he, started, he, uh, he started nurturing the talent and the, uh, the passion of technology when he was very, very young. And that is what we usually bring forth to our children here. And whatever solutions they create, these are just day-to-day -day problems they usually undergo. For example, there is a kid uh, who's called Gianna uh, Bichage. She's just nine years. She loves cooking. And uh, since she loves cooking, she created a mobile app which has different recipes and it, uh, other kids can learn how to cook different meals just through the same app. So you get that this is some, uh, something uh, through a kid's passion and uh, she can be able to bring it forth. Then uh, we, have, uh, like, uh, we have another kid called Maria. She loves mathematics. So she knows so many formulas. And uh, she thought since uh, she passed well in her last KCP, uh, she thought of coming up with formulas that can assist uh, other kids to revise mathematics much better, especially class 6, 7, and 8. So she created an app so that in, instead of kids just playing games and uh, uh, going to wrong sites using whenever they have phones, they can be able also to learn some of these things even when the textbook is not there. And you get that. This, uh, when you empower these kids and show them other constructive ways of using technology, they'll always come up with right solutions. And that is what we usually uh, see actually at Tech Kids Africa. There's a certain kid also, uh, just talk about him. Every time whenever he closed school and went uh, up country, uh, he could not understand the vernacular. So when he joined Tech Kids Africa and uh, he knew uh, uh, how to use technology, he thought that as a problem. So he created an app that assists in translating Kiswahili, English, to vernacular. So it's easy to learn still vernacular when you're still in town. So by the time you're going to your grandmother during the holidays, you're able to understand your grandmother and even have uh, some conversation. And uh, I think uh, this is because whenever we take them through the creative design thinking process, they look at problems and challenges as opportunities for them to take advantage and come up with solution. And I believe this is what uh, Kenya and Africa is supposed to be doing for the future, actually, of technology and also to protect these kids from doing wrong things online. Apart from all that, also we give them skills on online, uh, online safety because online actually has a lot, uh, a lot of things and they need to know the right things to pick and also how to be safe while they are online. So after here, what next? Uh, what we usually do is, like for example, today at uh, Pwani Innovation Week, what we are doing is we're trying to expose these kids now to possible opportunities. Like tomorrow we are having an expo where now 
they'll be presenting before uh, different people, before different stakeholders, what they've been able to, to do. We have had even some going to this uh, program called Lions Den, actually in KTN. Been presenting the ideas there, and apparently all the four kids that have been at Lions Den, the investors have been able to invest in them. So what we do as uh, Tech is Africa, when, when we, ta we see a bright mind, we try to expose them now to the right platform, the la right opportunities for them to be able actually to access also the right sponsorships. Like we are having also two who have gotten life uh, lifetime scholarships through different international schools that have seen different efforts that they are able to do. Yeah. Uh, though there are that much opportunities, some parents have been skeptical about their kids or children are learning about maybe social media. Uh, it is because for them it's more of an, a disadvantage than it is, it, it is as an advantage. Maybe what do you have to say to such a parent? Uh, what I'll tell these parents is uh, uh, that uh, if you protect your child from accessing social media when he's at home, believe me, when you're at work and he's at school, he'll be accessing something more dangerous than even social media. And also, it will be so hard for you to know what this child knows about technology. But when you allow this child to be able to access technology at home, because we usually train also parents on how to be able to track the history on how, where the sites his kids are also uh, going on. Because sometimes they tend to be uh, addictive. Yeah, yeah, it is addictive, but if you train them to use technology in a more constructive way, they'll have so many options on what to do whenever they are online. So we have so many options, and uh, the reason why kids misuse technology is because they have very limited options, and the limited options they're having, they're bad options. They are, most of them are wrong options. Just playing with games, they think it's all about entertainment. But it's more about if they understand that if I create this, I can be able to access a scholarship. I can be able to maybe be on TV. Yeah, they'll always try to do the right thing. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, well, that is one of the exhibitors who made way here at the Puan Innovation Week, just telling us uh, much concerning the kids uh, with their various apps uh, that they've managed uh, to come across with so that they can solve uh, solutions. I will keep you posted of what will be happening here uh, later on as the Innovation Week continues. Back to you in studio. Thank you very much, Tobias Chanji there, joining us from Mombasa, talking about the Pwani Innovation Week. And I mean, it's amazing what the children out there are doing with technology. A nine-year-old creating an app on cooking. I mean, I could definitely use that because between you and I, my cooking skills could use all the help 